Okay, a very underrated um, piece of Motorola communications equipment. This is the um, Motorola R2400, which was a fairly late model, you know, in Motorola terms. Um, obviously before the R2600s, etc. But uh, had a few nifty little features on it. And uh, uh, for today's example, I'm just using a little 520 and um, just going in and going, let's have a look, we've got any power output. We've got 98 watts coming out. There's our spectrum analyzer. And we can um, tighten that spectrum analyzer up a little bit uh, the other way, actually. Uh, let's have a look, which way am I going? Got to make sure we're the right way now. And I haven't, because uh, I can't see what I'm doing here. <laughs> Normal. Okay, okay, come this way. I went the wrong direction. There. And let's have a look. Yeah. Okay, so we're just tightening that up a bit there. And 97. Now, I can actually get more power out of this radio. I, I had the carrier turned down a bit. Um, Got to be careful these. Don't go too crazy with long bursts. Oh, I really was, it actually wasn't making that much difference at all. <laughs> 98 point seven point yeah let me give that a tune up I reckon they should do a little bit more okay a little bit more I was gonna say 108 109 yeah that's more like it that's actually uh, doing uh, quite nicely okay so this basically very similar to what um, you see me always using the R2 2001D um, this unit had a few positives to it this was the cut down version as far as um, when you lug this thing around you know you're lugging it around. It's 20 kilos. Uh, this thing weighs, you know, probably under 10 kilos. Actually, I think it's less. Um, and obviously, you know, the smaller display, but you've got also uh, these LCD displays. So, you know, they'd moved on from this um, uh, kind of concept here and uh, put a lot into LCD displays, which you know, actually works quite well. And um, as you can see, very easy to put a frequency in. Um, I've just gone in and gone zero, zero. Seven zero. I'm just repeating my frequency here. Nine seven. Hit um, enter and bang. We're in there, and we can um, uh, have a bit of a. Uh, if we come off CW here, I haven't got AM on this radio. I just realised. Uh, so you're going to hear me one two three four five one two three four five one two. <laughs> um, so um, uh, they have a CW function as well. Uh, trying to remember whether or not you could activate a BFO. I don't think you would hear it. No, you would just see it. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's not seeing it. Um, and then FM, of course, you could go to. But um, just trying to remember if they had a BFO function. I don't. With the uh, just to, to point that out, one thing you can do with the 2001D is you have a BFO function to be able to monitor your sideband signal. So if we were to quickly swap over, I'll show you that. So on the BFO function, you can actually bring up the frequency, hit the BFO, uh, uh, turn the BFO on, and uh, basically one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So you can actually hit resolve that sideband on the uh, 2001D. Now, um, someone's gonna need to comment on this. I don't think you can on the, um, I'm pretty sure it was a feature on this one here that they, they uh, left off because they were heading more uh, whilst this is a HF tool and, and works quite well on HF, they were heading more towards, uh, the market was heading more towards VHF, UHF, and they wanted a, a tool that obviously uh, addressed that. But part of me is just wondering whether there is a, a trick. And I'm just going to have a quick play. So after having a quick play, I don't remember a way to trick it to um, resolve sideband. I was going through a couple of ideas that I thought, um, you know, I thought there might have been a way to inject a, a carry into it, but um, uh, if anybody actually has had a bit more of a play with the 2400 than me and um, uh, knows how to do that, put a comment in the comments file, absolutely. Um, now we're just having a look at the spectrum analyzer. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. And you see those little nasties on the side there? Um, it's not, not too bad, actually. I'm, I'm graphically sort of overdoing it there just for uh, emphasis. Um, Obviously, you can then go to uh, generating a signal, which we've got over here, generate. But to do that first, put it over into generate mode. 
and you'll see up here and we'll just bring up generate 7097 and we might just go now we're generating an FM signal there um, that's the CW signal there let's just have a look at where it's generating we'll leave it about there and I'm just interested to see how far we can wind this down we're coming down and we can actually follow this on the screen here see how I'm going minus 94 dBm minus 104 dBm still hearing it minus 115 so we're sort of getting around that 0.5 a microvolt just actually better than now I can do with the vernier over here I can actually adjust it uh, manually I'm still hearing it at minus 120 oh 125 just having a listen it's getting pretty distant there minus 125 to be fair uh, but um, yeah you certainly could just inject a signal in and obviously um, go the opposite way to test your S9 50 microvolts as such now we're actually putting about 64 dBm there I'm so used to microvolts I've got to stop doing that <laughs> but um, um, now you can change that meter from memory there we go okay so for the, those of you used to microvolts millivolts etc you can see me sort of go up and down um, and I need to come down there a bit more we're really getting down again so there's point two of a microvolt they're still hearing it um, and if we convert that to um, dBm minus 120 dBm so actually yeah that's that's doing quite a good job and once again when I come up to uh, 50 microvolts oops too far come back down a bit up a bit and down a bit we'll go and we should find when we hit 50 microvolts that meter should be give or take a little bit around S9 and we're about S9 so these these machines are really good for doing setups like this great if you could turn the noise off and uh, but I just while I had the two on the bench I thought I'll just sort of show you know a bit of an idea uh, about why the 2400 was so popular and it was its portability I mean here's its um, <laughs> other thing 12 volt cable um, you know sort of uh, that you could run off now admittedly you, you could put battery packs in this uh, but they get awfully heavy that's that's the thing <clears throat> excuse me but um, so a lot of the guys used to have little gel cells that they could run on these these drew a lot less current and that was the uh, the other thing that uh, out in the field made the 2400 probably a bit more of a winner over the 2001 um, me I still love my old 2001 I've got to say uh, but you know I, I, you wouldn't go past the 2400 if it uh, comes your direction so uh, but look there's a hundred different things I could show you with uh, how they they do their coding systems you can basically feed the opposite back through uh, if we turn the tone off hang on let me just turn that tone off there now what we want to do is um, get that microphone back in my hand and that's off there uh, hang on I just got to change I know what it is okay so the other nice thing you could do was the opposite um, you could feed a signal back in one two three four five one two so I'm feeding off the um, Motorola microphone one two three four five and I'm hearing myself up there so I can actually hear not just a, a tone but I can sit there and actually vary that um, RF input at the moment we're, we're talking at um, 27 microvolts but as you'll see I can uh, I can change that quite drastically and um, bring that up there one two one two one two one two three four five and millivolts sorry not microvolts and we'll just come up there what are we doing out there one two one two one two and as you can see our, our signal strength because of this changing the, uh, the amount of gain that we're putting in there we can see that on the meter so we're way over s9 because we're basically you know we're punching in uh, 0.8 of a millivolt so it's it's a fair bit of a fair bit of uh, uh, action going on there so um, not not all of them ever came with the microphone um, this one doesn't I must have been off stolen the mic off this one here but um, certainly uh, uh, if you can get a mic for it or wire a mic up 
The hardest thing to get generally is the plug. They use a um, rather unfamiliar plug uh, that you can see on the front there. So if you come across an R2400, um, remember 2400, there's a few that look similar, but the 2400 definitely was the, the later model, the one that you really want to look for. And uh, it's, um, they really were a nice machine. Um, I actually was just playing around with an old, this is an old friend of mine from the uh, Poxag paging days and bits and pieces. And um, uh, you know, we're just generating a CTCSS tone off that. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a day of having a play with also got, um, I don't know if you remember the old triplet uh, corporation, um, maybe maybe some of you do, some don't, goes back a fair way, of course the old Marconi 2955B, so it's a, the, the bench is full of a bit of stuff at the moment, but uh, but it was interesting just to, I, I thought while I had the two together, um, often we don't get to talk about why I love the uh, 2001 uh, D so much, um, and quite seriously, if I had to carry this thing, no, I'd be carrying this every day of the week, um, no question. <laughs> so, you know, they both basically do very, very similar features. Um, the negative with this fella is that whilst I've got stock of the um, the tubes, excuse me, for these, um, that has definitely become one of the, uh, the more difficult things to find. Um, so some people, you know, don't like the 2001D because they're, they're concerned. Um, generally, I tell people, you know, check out the tube what it looks like when you when you look at a 2001D you know if, if you're starting to be intensity swung all around and and you're you know, barely getting a picture well yeah you probably a good chance that tubes gonna give you some trouble um, but you know look at this I mean you know we're bang no worries there's just loads so I'm pretty happy with that one and the other one I've got in the other workshop um, um, you know the same sort of brightness um, with the um, uh, intensity of the um, there's a whole different uh, concept that they went to here and um, it's one thing there's a little knob missing there but um, uh, yeah there's a fair bit of intensity sitting there and um, uh, at the moment actually I'm I'm on uh, oh, let's have a look here uh, actually no sorry I need to come around go back to the spectrum there and actually you can see there just that that intensity of that line there a lot more distinct um, and um, once again if we bring up a signal <laughs> which we're on spectrum analyzer one two three four five one two three one two one two three so you know look for these sort of things when you're looking at um, monitors you'll find these here pretty trouble free I haven't had too many issues uh, with the LCDs I've uh, um, had a few 2400s over the years and um, the LCDs have been pretty good uh, uh, most issues you find whether it's the 2001D or the uh, 2400 generally will be clean out um, all your um, infrastructure on the front. So all your controls, you deox it, get in there and give them a spray every now and again. Um, nine times out of 10, uh, that'll be a problem. And, and you'll find that um, that uh, that lack of trace all of a sudden is actually the intensity control with a bit of dirt in it, etc., etc. I could go through a dozen other things on this machine, but you get the basic idea that, you know, we're talking very similar machines here between the two and, um, and that they, um, perform very much the same function. Uh, I would be interested if somebody, uh, I, I just for the life of me, um, should know the answer to this question, whether there was a way to to um, bring a BFO signal into uh, the uh, 2400. I just can't remember. Um, I, I think the answer is no, uh, off the top of my head, and but uh, I may be forgetting something. It's been a little while. Um, that's getting old. All right, 73s, nice to have a little bit of a play with uh, some of the gear. I'm actually out in the American barn today, not out, not in the normal workshop. So uh, thought we'd have a little bit of a play with a few things that are lying around. 73s, VK3, Charlie, Mike, all the best. Talk to you soon, and please subscribe, hit the bell, all that sort of stuff. Cheers.